The United States conducted bombing exercises Monday in the skies above South Korea, according to a government source, involving four 35B stealth jets and two B-1B strategic bombers. Bombing exercises were reportedly a warning to North Korea over its recent nuclear and missile provocations, coming three days after Pyongyang fired another ballistic missile over Japan. The source said the U.S. bombers trained together with four South Korean F-15K fighter jets and then returned to their bases in Japan and Guam. This was the second time the F-35 and B-1B fighters have held joint bombing exercises since August 31st. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says that the U.S. is seeking a peaceful resolution to the North Korean situation, but is ready to choose a military option if diplomatic efforts fail. In an interview with CBS News, Tillerson called the U.S. policy on North Korea the peaceful pressure campaign. He said the policy is built around putting together a strong international coalition to send the same message to North Korea, China and Russia. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley said in an interview with CNN that the U.S. and other Security Council members have pretty much exhausted all the things they can do. We have pretty much exhausted all the things that we could do at the Security Council at this point. Now, I said yesterday, I'm perfectly happy kicking this over to General Mattis because he has plenty of military options. So I think that the fire and fury, while he said this is what we can do to North Korea, we wanted to be responsible and go through all diplomatic means to get their attention first. If that doesn't work, General Mattis will take care of it. U.S. President Donald Trump wrote on Twitter on Sunday that he asked South Korean President Moon Jae-in over the phone how Rocketman was doing, apparently mocking North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. This regime is so close now to threatening the United States and others with a, a nuclear weapon that we really have to move with a great deal of urgency on sanctions, on diplomacy, and on preparing, if necessary, a military option. Sanctions, diplomacy, preparing, if necessary, a military option. Is there really a military option? We talked about, you know, 24 million people in Seoul. I mean, it could be just totally devastating, and the costs are just over, uh, unimaginable. But there is one military option people don't talk about, and that is we need to stop and interdict North Korean ships on their way to Iran selling missiles. The North Koreans sell the chemical weapons that Assad uses on his children, and a lot of this goes by ship. Now, the Security Council on September 11th did not give us the authority to board ships without permission of the ship owner. 
But at this point, we don't need that authority, Eric, because the North Koreans have given it to us themselves. At least three times last decade, they abrogated the Korean War armistice. You know, that means there's no agreement not to use force. If, if there's no agreement, it means we can board those ships to, for weapon searches. And the Security Council itself has said that these weapons transfers out of North Korea are against sanctions. So, so they Russian and Belarus say the exercises conducted along their western borders all the way to Kaliningrad and beyond St. Petersburg are purely defensive in nature. On September 17, a new stage of drills begins. During this new stage, we will work out methods of operations of troops and forces in carrying out military actions to repel aggression towards the Union state of Russia and Belarus. But military observers say the drills include mock invasions of two fictitious countries similar to Poland and Lithuania making those countries nervous. An Estonian analyst notes that Russia conducted large-scale military drills before invading Georgia and Crimea. We have seen the exercises uh, that were held uh, four years ago and eight years ago, and uh, it is pretty clear to us what are they actually rehearsing, in spite of their officially declared uh, scenarios. Uh, partly, of course, they exercise defense against whom I don't know, but in any case, um, uh, we see that there is a clear offensive character in, in, in their scenarios, in, in their exercises, uh, including against the Baltic states and Poland. But he adds Belarus has more reason to fear Russia's invasion than the NATO member states. Moscow is not interested in provoking the Western allies, he says, but could always come up with an excuse to deploy forces in Belarus. For instance, to say that, well, you see, um, allies deployed their forces to the Baltic states and Poland, so we deployed ours in Belarus, which is our allies. So, very simple, isn't it? So, as if this is just a Russian response, not another aggression. A spokesman for the Belarus Defense Ministry says the number of Russian troops participating in the joint drill is much smaller than the 7,000 local troops. By the beginning of the drills, all units of Russian forces, around 3,000 servicemen, were deployed on the territory of Belarus and no other units will arrive. The Zapad 2017 exercises end September 20th. Even before that, Russia is scheduled to begin a new set of joint land and sea military drills with China on its eastern coast Monday. The two nations already conducted naval drills in July in Russia's Baltic Sea. Their stated goal is improving security in the world's oceans, but many see them as a show of force against NATO. Zlatica Hope, VOA News, Washington.